Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at how to use GitHub Actions with React to set up automatic Docker builds for your app. So to get started, let's take a look at our application. As you can see, it's basically the default Vite app you'd create. And yeah, that's already it. So as you can see, I've already prepared a little repository right here in which we're going to be working, which just contains this app. And our goal is to automatically create Docker images whenever something is pushed to the main branch. So as you can see, I've already prepared a Docker file as well because that one is quite simple. We basically say, okay, we want to use the default Docker config for engines so that we don't need to apt install it. And we want to copy our dist folder to yeah, the normal HTML folder in nginx. If you don't know that uh, dist folder is basically the build folder for um, Vite. So if you were using create react app, then you would write build here instead of dist. But yeah, that's basically already it for the differences. So. Now we can actually move on with the actions already. So we're going to click on actions inside of our repository on GitHub and we're going to say set up a workflow yourself. Now here is a lot of comment stuff and all that, which I'm going to remove while trying to explain all of this to you. So basically this is code that will always run when either a push happens to main or a pull request happens to main. You might want to change this so that pushes don't count or that pull requests don't count or whatever. Or you might want to remove this workflow dispatch, which basically allows somebody to press a button to run your um, pipeline. If that is something you don't want, I don't know. And if one of these happens, then our jobs are going to run. And these jobs are basically going to be code that is executed whenever these events happen to create a build or do something with your repository, basically. You could also add tests in here if you want. So let's get started. First of all, we've got a name. CI is fine because we only do continuous integration, not continuous deployment here. So we only create the Docker image. We don't deploy it automatically. Then the branches are also fine. I want it to run on every push to main or if a pull request happens to main. And I want to be able to tr uh, trigger it myself. So that's fine as well. So now let's change this a bit so our name is going to be jobs docker it runs on ubuntu linux is the cheapest option on github uh, actions so basically github actions free but you only have a certain amount of hours per month and on linux those are that's the highest number so you can basically run the most code on github actions if you use linux so ubuntu is fine now we want to basically import some stuff this is done in the steps and uses. So first of all, we use checkout, which is basically giving us Git functionality in here. And then we also want to use something else, which is actions setup node at v3. So this is basically, I seem to have made a typo, I guess. This is basically a way to use Node.js inside of your app right here. As you can see, we're using Node version 14, which gives us the option to run NPM and also to run actual Node scripts, which will come in useful at some point. Now we can actually start defining our steps, like it says right here. Steps are basically going to be parts of jobs. So all of these jobs will run simultaneously once these conditions are met. And then in every job, there are steps and those steps will run synchronously, so one after the other. To get started, we're going to create a job that sets up our git config. Because one thing we are going to want to do is actually increase our version on every commit to the master. And to do that, we of course need some kind of user to do that. And the basic user you use most of the time for this is actually a bot. So we're going to give our action a name. We're going to call it setup git config, and then we're just going to say run. And we're going to add one of these pipes here to be able to use multiple rows for that. And here we're going to say, okay, git config username, github action spot, git config user email. And yeah, that's the basic email for the github action spot. Quite simple in my opinion. Shouldn't be much of an issue. Now we can already start with the next one because we now set um, the user we want to use. And then we can basically already continue by saying, okay, dash name dependencies, for example, and the dependencies are going to be executed using a run command. Also, you, uh, you don't need the minus in front of the run, so you can get rid of that. And run will just run npm ci. So this is basically the same as npm install, but cleanly, because you basically always want to do a clean install 
on your servers. Then we can already move on. Now that we have the dependencies, we can of course also create a build. So build will run, npm run build. I think you get um, how this is working. You basically you always run shell commands. And yeah, now let's get to something a bit more advanced, which is actually saving the current version of your node module to use it later. So saving it will work by actually creating a variable called id, or named by id, and that id is version. And to set it, we are basically going to run an echo command, so something that spits something out on the terminal. And in our case, we are just going to use this big bit of code right here. Uh, you don't need to exactly know how it works. We're basically using some node code to require stuff from our package JSON and get the version. You can basically copy paste this from the description because this pipeline is of course going to be linked in the description as well. But yeah, what we're doing here is we're reading the version from the package JSON and putting it in a variable. Now that we've got our current version, we can actually move on by increasing the version. You could also do this in different order, like first increasing the version and then pushing. That's up to you. So this is actually a tool from npm, npm version patch. And what it does is it increases your version in npm and yeah, that's it already. And then you can just push the new version to um, GitHub. You don't need any authorization because it already runs on GitHub, so GitHub knows that it's authorized. And yeah, that's it. So now that the Git part is done, we can actually move on by pushing it to Docker. So as you can see, login to Docker registry is our next step. And yeah. What it does, it, it puts our secrets Docker password, which we're going to set up afterwards, to log into Docker with our username. And yeah, that allows us to basically push Docker images to Docker Hub. We're going to get into that shortly, don't worry. Next thing we're going to need to do is actually create our Docker image. So we're going to do that manually again without copy pasting. So name is build Docker image and our Docker image is gonna be created by using run docker build dot. We need the dot because as you remember, we got the Docker file and the Docker file is on root. So that is gonna tell it where the Docker file basically is positioned. Then we can define the file that we're gonna use, which is a Docker file. It should use it by default, but repeating what it should do can't hurt because it gives you secureness that it's also gonna work in the future if for whatever reason this is renamed or whatever. And then we're going to give it a name or a tag. And basically that's going to be our username slash the name of our Docker container. In this case, I'm going to call it test. You would probably do something different or I'm going to call it tut in this case. And then we're going to say colon. And here we can actually use the variable we defined before by using a dollar and two curly braces. And here we can say, okay, our variable is on the scope steps. Then it's called version outputs. This is just created automatically, all this logic of how it's called. And we want the tag. So basically we say our version that's created is going to be your username slash your Docker file name, colon, so the version, and then the version you saved before from your NPM. If you don't want to use the NPM version, then you could write whatever you wanted here. Like maybe you just want latest, then you would of course put latest here. I'm going to go with tagged only because, yeah, I don't want to use latest right now because it's basically the same as this and yeah, we don't want to get too repetitive right here, right? So now we can basically say, okay, I want to push that Docker image. So name push to Docker hub. And here, what we'll basically need to do is just run Docker push. And here we will basically need to do um, the exact same stuff. So we copy this code right here, just without the tag bit. And we say, okay, username slash name slash uh, colon version. And that's it. This is basically how you're going to push this to Docker Hub. And then you're done. Remember, if you want to make it easier for yourself, just say latest and don't do all this version stuff. I personally like it. So we're going to go with that. And now we could basically already commit this, commit new file. And then it automatically creates our little folder structure here. So it creates a .github folder with a slash workflows directory. And in here we got our main jaml, which we just created. And now you can also see that here's a little circle 
that shows you that your actions are actually already running because as you know you made a commit to main right now and yeah that's trying to run right now it's not going to work because as you remember we've got these secrets in there and those secrets aren't set yet so to actually create those secrets we're going to check what they were called in here and as you remember or as you might remember there was docker hub password and docker hub username so now to set these we're basically going to open this in a new tab and we're going to go into settings secrets actions and here you can set your secrets so new repository secret here we're going to copy docker hub password and we need to set a value and now you need to go to docker hub you need to create an account as you can see i already have one then you need to click on your username right here on account settings security and here you got your tokens your access tokens and to create a new access token you just hit new access token give it a name i'm going to call it tut for tutorial give it permissions in our case we need to read uh, to set read write and delete delete isn't all that necessary but yeah i'm just going to create a delete token anyway don't worry i'll delete this token after the tutorial you can't use it so don't even try and yeah then we hit copy and close and after that your token is only in your um copied text you can't access it from here so if you need a new token then you need to create a new token so now you can go into your secret paste it as your value add the secret and that's it already fail to add secrets secret names can only contain alphanumeric characters or underscores spaces are not allowed okay so i accidentally copied a space so let's just paste that again, remove the space on the end and add secret and now it works. And now we need to add the other secret which is docker hub username. You could also paste this in without using a secret because your username doesn't need to be secret. In our case we're going to do it like that just so you get used to using secrets in github. And also I made a typo right now. So let's fix that up real quick like that, update secret and everything's fine. So now, if we will run this once more, so go to Actions and CI, and then we just hit Run Workflow, then we should see a image, an image being created, basically. Okay, so I made one small typo, which is kind of sad because I made it in my username. My username is called Zaraman with double N, double N, and not one N. So we're going to fix that up real quick. Start commit commit changes and then a new pipeline will run automatically because we again pushed to master and now update main yaml should run through just fine let's hope it does now as you can see everything went just fine we've got the screen marks right here and if we now head to docker hub and go to our start page as you can see i already need to create a new token because i messed up and thought the token was wrong but actually as you saw my username was wrong then we go to my profile and here we got Zyreman Tat. So now let's test if it actually works. So as you can see, I've got a little Ubuntu VM running here so we can basically set up Docker in here to test if everything's working. So we're gonna run sudo docker run dash dash name and our name is just gonna be test dash d so it runs in the background dash p to basically define the ports we want to open. So we're gonna say our local port 8080 is gonna be mapped to port 80 inside of the container so basically we want to run our engines on port 8080 on our host system and then we just want to define the image which is xiaman slash that let's just check that real quick so we're going to go back to our browser xiaman slash that and now let's just check what version we pushed because if you're not losing latest then you should always set attack so 0.0.3 is the current version and now if we just run this and hope for the best then we should hopefully see that it's pulling our image with everything that it needs like engines and all that stuff and now when it's done we should hopefully have a fully running version of our Vite app on our server now let's just say sudo docker ps we see it's running and here is our Vite app running inside of a Docker container. So our pipeline worked. I hope you can use this. You might actually want to do some webhook stuff or whatever to also make this continuous deployment. But for this, this should be enough. You now created your own Docker image 
and post it to Docker Hub. And now, I hope you're going to have a good day.